Module 3.1, Rate of Change and Slope. Objective 1, given a function, determine the average rate of change. Objective 2, given a function and a point, find the instantaneous rate. And Objective 3, given a function, find the slope. Let's look at Objective 1, given a function, determine the rate of change. The rate of change formula is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. The concept of this formula basically represents the change in the range y divided by the change in the domain. If this formula looks familiar to you, it may remind you a lot of the slope formula. Example one, let's say a golf ball is hit off of a tee box and the time in seconds from the contact of the club is represented by t and the function h of t represents the height of the golf ball in its flight. The formula for the function of the height of the golf ball in feet is h of t is equal to negative 16t squared plus 64t. Let us determine a few facts from the function and from using this model. A, what was the original height of the golf ball? B, what was the height of the golf ball after two seconds? How long did it take for the ball to hit the ground? And what is the average rate of change of the height between the first and the third second. Below is the graph or the path of the golf ball, but let's use mathematics to figure out exact answers to the previous questions. Hey, what was the original height of the golf ball? And we know using common sense the ball was on the ground or supposedly close to the ground on a tee. So if we look at this, remember that we have h of t is equal to negative 16 t squared plus 64 t. If we let time be equal to zero, which was the starting time, then we should have negative 16 zero squared plus 64 times zero, and that will give us zero plus zero which is zero. So that our common sense and the mathematics go hand in hand in this case. B, what is the height of the ball after two seconds? Well, in this case, we need h of two. And that would be equal to negative 16 times two squared plus 64 times two. So that would be equal to negative 16 times four plus 128, or negative 64 plus 128, which is equal to 64. So the height of the ball after two seconds would be 64 feet. Part C, how long did it take the ball to land? So we're trying to find what T would be equal. Okay, let's look at our function. What we're going to do is we need to find out where it occurs that h of t is equal to zero. So we're going to put zero in for h of t, or the height. That would be negative 16t squared plus 64t. We're going to use our factoring process. So I think we can get 16 out of both of them and a t. And so that would give me negative t plus Four. That's equal to zero. Separate and set each one equal to zero. So if you've got 16t equal to zero, then t equal to zero for the first one, which made sense. Our common sense told us that the ball started on the on the ground at t equals zero. In our second stipulation, we've got negative t plus four equals zero. So we're going to subtract four from both sides. So negative t equal negative four and we have t equal 4. So the ball starts off on the ground at t equals 0, and then it lands after 4 seconds. So it took the ball 4 seconds to land. Find the average rate of change between 1 and 3 seconds. Remember that our formula for average rate of change, where in this case, height altitude change is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So f of b would be f of 3 
minus f of 1 over 3 minus 1. And remember that our function is h of t is equal to negative 16t squared plus 64t for the golf ball. Okay, so here we go. We're going to plug 3 in. So that would be negative 16 times 3 squared plus 64 times 3. All of that minus, better use brackets here, that'll be negative 16 times 1 squared plus 64 times 1 all over 2. So that would be equal to negative 16 times 9 plus, and then we've got this, which would be 192 minus, got a bracket, that will be negative 16 plus 64 all over 2. So that would be equal to negative 144 plus 192 plus 16 minus 64 all divided by 2. So that'll be 0 divided by 2 which is equal to 0. So the average rate of change would be equal to 0 feet per second over the period of three to one seconds. If we think about what this means when we interpret it, it means that the ball on average gained nothing between three and one seconds. So the height at one second and the height at three seconds is going to be equal. Objective two, determining instant instantaneous rate of change. Instantaneous rate of change is defined as the rate of change of an object at a particular time. The formula for instantaneous rate of change is the limit as h approaches 0 of the function of x plus h minus the function of x over h. Determine the instantaneous rate of change of our golf ball at the third second of its flight. Remember that our formula of the golf ball was f of t is equal to negative 16t squared plus 64t. So we need to find the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 16t plus h quantity squared plus 64t plus h minus negative 16t squared plus 64t all over h. Okay, we're going to go through and that will give us the limit as h approaches 0. And we're going to do our FOIL here. So that would be negative 16 times t squared plus 2th plus h squared plus 64t plus 64h plus 16t squared minus 64t all over h. We're going to do our distributive property. That will give us the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 16t squared minus 32th minus 16h squared plus 64t plus 64h plus 16t squared minus 64t all over h. Combine my like terms, so that will give me the limit as h approaches 0. And let's see what kind of fun we can have here. We've got the negative 16t squared and the 16t squared. We've got the positive 64, the negative 64. So that should leave us with negative 32th minus 16h squared plus 64h all 
over h, which will be equal to the limit as h approaches 0. And we can take an h out of the top, which will give us negative 32t minus 16h plus 64, let's see closed, over h. Notice that the h's cancel. And when we take the limit of this function as h is equal to 0, since it's a polynomial, then this one will be equal to 0. So we will end up with negative 32t plus 64. And we want to know what it would be equal to when t is equal to 3 from our given third second. So we would apply 3 into this, which would give us negative 32 times 3 plus 64. And that would end up giving us negative 32 feet per second. So notice that the ball has now gone over the top and is starting to come down and therefore it is losing 32 feet per second. Objective 3. Find the slope formula of a function at any point. To find the slope, we use the same formula we did when we found an instantaneous rate of change. So the slope of x would be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of the function of x plus h minus the function of x over h. Well, if you'll remember, we ended up getting, when we took the limit of that function in the last problem, so we ended up getting negative 32t plus 64. Okay, so we now have the general slope formula at any point in time. So the slope of f of t at any particular point on the graph would be equal to negative 32t plus 64. Let's say we needed to find the slope at t equal 1. We could find the slope of that curve at t equal 1 by simply finding the slope function and then substituting 1 into the function. So that would be negative 32 times 1 plus 64. So that, that would be negative 32 plus 64, which would be equal to 32. So the slope would be 32, or 32 over 1, at t equal 1.